time to strap in and get ready. The Insight NBA team is in the arena, bringing you the ultimate play-by-play on who's hot and who's not to help you win your leagues and dominate your mates. You're now hooping with your hosts, Matty G, Skitty, and Mally for the Insight NBA Show. Hello everyone, it is G and it is Skitty and we are here to rock your, that's not a foreign one, that's a very purpley beverage. What are you <laughs> drinking, Skitty? Oh, just these things that me uh, that the Dale got, they're, uh, they're called Sodaly, Remedy Sodaly Passion Fruits, they're not bad, they, they, they do something at least, like you know, they're, they're not, just, actually... not just water. No, <laughs> it's not just water, nor is it kombucha, and nor no. are some people about the schedule when they draft. Now, Look, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a truther. At the end of the day, Skitty, let's be honest. Every single team plays 82 games in an NBA yep. season uh, with unforeseen things and reshifting like that Warriors and Jazz game last year. And however it breaks down, every single team plays 82 games. Correct. Correct. However, I do believe that schedule does matter. Because at some point in time, there are things that we can glean from the schedule, especially when it impacts our playoffs. And if we look at 82 games and where they're spaced out on a calendar directly, that tells us a story. But it also tells us where we can create narratives in our leagues to draft well, but also we can use as trade, ammunition, and bait. What it, and, and I think that's one of the most important things. It's actually pre-having a, a strategy about like, okay, well, yep. I know a couple of teams that might be struggling and I might contact their manager before anyone else does to try and make a deal. Skitty, where are you with schedule? Yeah, Cripple, I'm about the same as you, mate. Um, I really think that there is a good solid uh, good solid ways that you can really take advantage of your teams when, um, when you are looking at your schedule for one. Um, a big one that I always like to do is when I'm drafting, I don't like to. I like to look at the schedule and who's got the lesser games at the start of the NBA season. I will not take those guys as my last round flyers to to build off of. Um, there's no point when we can just get them off the waiver wire the week after, and I'm already a game behind of the other people that have chosen waiver ads. There, um, obviously, last year the big narrative was where we going to take Luca. Um, because and Kyrie, because the Mavs had that two two game playoff week, and um, yeah, I'm sure that probably would have hurt a lot of people. So we do have to really take notice of that. Spoiler alert: the NBA has cooked them, and that's going to happen. And we're going to talk about how they have done that later on. So we're going to break this down into the basics and into the back text. Buy our merch. Just throw that shirt up there again. You can get James that right. shirt, Skitty. You yes, can sorry. get that right on the merch store. The link is downstairs, as well as a whole bunch of next week. Brand new NBA fantasy merch is dropping as well. Ooh. It is sexy. you got to get onto that one again. Link down below. So we're breaking this down into this, the basics. So let me run you through this one. If you're new to fantasy, if you've been in there a couple of years and you want to know how it works, this listen is up. Listen, listen this up is to the Papa listen. G. Oh, Papa G. I like that. Papa Skitty. I like it when you call me Big Puppy. Um, this is the Yahoo fantasy season ultimately is broken down into 23 weeks. The NBA season. Yes. Correct. Is 25 weeks for those of you who don't know. And now, you know, because week seven and week 16 are actually two weeks long in these base Yahoo leagues. So they're combined in there. These are the schedules where we can see the NBA cup. And this is also the all-star break weekend. Now yeah. playoffs, there's the star. That is the default for weeks 21, 22, and 23. We're going to dig down deep into that. But that is just for Yahoo. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, wait, mine looks a little bit different. That's because ESPN default is 22 again. This is the default, Skitty. And playoffs are actually double length weeks as well. So it's actually two weeks combined in this set. So it's not like you're attacking it week for week. So this is where that Mavericks thing, like you mentioned, might be okay because you can might be able to take out six games in two weeks because there's three and three for your comp- opponent's best other player. But on a single week, it does really matter. Fan tracks default is 24 weeks. The only double week that they do run is the all-star period skiddy is a double week. That is the only thing. And it's probably the closest and the most aligned. But again, skiddy commissioners have complete say when they can start their leagues. Correct. 
Yeah, we're just saying that there is ways that you should really be uh, looking at this before you do set up your leagues. Uh, I think the the main one is everyone asks is when to end your league. And uh, we always say those last two leagues, G, that uh, so the last two weeks, geez, they are hard to play fantasy in just because of how much bullshit can happen. Um, what did we say last year? There was so much of like so Portland's many. bull crap, Utah's bullshit, Spurs. Um, Why about Larry Markinen? Do you yeah, want to pack Larry a bag Martin and go home to Finland early? Jeremy Grant hasn't bloody played um, past March 30th for the past about four years. Um, since he was in Denver or OKC, like that's just, yeah, it, it's just this weird crap that happens. And yeah, that's why we say you should end it uh, two weeks beforehand at the end of the season. So then you don't, you don't get into this crabby ways where Darius Days is one of the best fantasy options you have because he's almost doing double-double threats each day. Exactly right. And this is where he's an NBL threat now. Make sure you check out that NBL show as well. It's firing all cylinders. Now, like we said, the Fire. default there as well, firing. Uh, this is again. So the defaults here are 21, 22, 23. So I actually went in today to one of the Yahoo leagues that I'm in uh, and I run and I opened up the settings to show you exactly what your commissioner will see on the back end. And the commissioner see here that you can get the chance to how many teams are in your playoffs and when you can do them. So the big thing here is that weeks 19, 20, and 21 is the default. However, encourage your commissioner, talk to the people in your league. You can see the one above that is eight teams, weeks 18, 19, and 20. That's an option for six teams and an option yep. for four teams, Skinny. So you yep. really want to start it a little bit earlier to save the shen – like stop the shenanigans. Hashtag. Mm -hmm. I can do it with one thing, couple fingers. Stop the shenanigans. 18 there. Uh we want to get onto though the back to back skitty because there was news today. Yes. What was Kawhi Leonard? Ooh. I'm getting deja vu, G. You're and getting deja like vu. <laughs> uh, knee problems again. A minor procedure. Yeah, minor procedure. And uh, the clip is already saying shit about how Kawhi's, you know, might be rested and not going to be ready to start the season. And I'm just, no, gee, we've heard this before. It's a, it's a red flag for me. I, I, I am not, I am not in on Kawhi. It does. I don't care. I don't care if it's leg, arm, back, shoulder, <laughs> knees, and toes. Don't care. Anything with Kawhi is. Red yeah, flags, yeah, dangerous. Show us knees and toes, knees and so toes. So he's currently going around 20 odd or something like that, maybe like mid to 20s as well. I'm dropping him. He's going down now for me. I no, 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 no. I can't do this. But Harden, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Stock up on Harden, stock yeah. down again. But Harden stock has already risen since his yeah, initial yeah, AEPs so for this reason. So this okay. is where he's now flirting at end of first. Yeah. I've seen him taking it. I've I've seen him taking it 12. I've I've seen him take been taken ahead of Steph Curry and Trey Young. There you go. So it That's depends on what are. machine. I mean, he's he's playing with a bunch of G leaguers. So I mean, there's a lot there for him to do with the Clippers and eventually Zubac. Other, and Zubac, <laughs> again gets a bump, and I can't wait for Zubac. You know that I am there for Big Zoo this season. Mm -hmm. But this is interesting as well. You get a lot of back to backs from other big teams like the Bucks. We're looking there at Chris Middleton yep. and Giannis being rested on these games. We've seen that happen yep. in the past. We know under new management that could possibly happen there because Doc does like to save his players from getting injuries. Uh, the Nuggets, the Rockets, the Cavaliers. Again, Cavaliers, absolutely. That's your team. Injury decimated last year. We'll see yeah. where they go for injuries this year. If it's a repeat, obviously that will be managed. The Pelicans is a big one because Zion, I guess, is the name that we've had the biggest injury cloud on. Relatively healthy last year, Skitty. Mm -hmm. But the team... Changes this year, Brandon Ingram out, someone new possibly coming in for a real center, potentially? Oh, it depends how they're going to make the moves there. But at the current moment, Ingram's there and Tice is probably the guy, he's probably the guy there. But, um, yeah, we, we have a few options that can keep that going down, G. There's, it's hard with the rest of them because it's going to be coming up as the season goes. The main ones that we do have to worry about there are uh, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Middleton. Um, they're the main Main dangers there, you could, I mean, you could say KD, but KD's been pretty bloody healthy ever, like, for a long period. It's going to be when they get nagging injuries throughout the season. It's more or less, at the moment, they're the main ones currently that we have to be somewhat wary of. I'm a little bit interested in the Wizards as well. They do play the most back-to-back. -back. So if they're any of their quote-unquote stars, Kyle Kuzma um, or Jordan Poole, happen to be injured, 
We could see a lot more run for guys like Bob Carrington and yes. Alex Saar and Bilal Koulibaly, especially if Valen Tunis gets injured in that center spot. Yep. It's a stretch four five. So there's not a lot of other options around. So we could look to the Wizards to get a little bit of value if injuries do flare up there. On the other side of this flip coin, it's really interesting though because 16 is the most back-to-backs of any teams that have played. The least back-to-backs played. Uh, 13, so it's only three difference on the back-to-backs, but three can be a lot in this situation. The Bulls, the Celtics, the Mavericks, your favorite team, the Lakers, the Orlando Magic, and the Portland Trailblazers. And the number one big, 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 big red flag for me, but it's not red. It's more like I'm charging at it because it's just Al Horford standing there with a low count of back-to-backs compared to other teams going like, hi, I'm over here. You can draft me around 100, not 120, and I'm really good value. I'm going to play more games, I promise you. It's only three more. So when you look at it, you're still guaranteeing yeah. what's that? That's uh, 69, yeah. at, 69 at best. <laughs> and then it's... 69 of uh, <laughs> games until Kristaps Porzingis is back. So let's say it's only about maybe he'll be back in, what, January or something like that, so halfway. So let's say it's roughly around about 40, 35, 40 games of Al Horford you're going to get, but you can definitely ride it for a bit. Now, if you look at where the back-to-backs fall as well, there are a few on that back end of the season. They, I, I would hesitate to guess that they're not going to be playing KP on the back-to-backs. Oh, definitely not. No, not a goddamn chance. No. So if they'll, that's me, they'll space it out I, well where they're able to have either Porzingis and Cornet play one, and then Horford and Cornet play the other. Exactly. There's a lot of Unicornet coming up. Lots of Unicornetto coming up this season. We can expect that one as well. Uh, but like we said, they're the Trailblazers as well. They're least. That's good back from injuries for guys like Anthony Simons and Shannon Sharp coming back in. The Mavericks, again, the least back-to-back. So over there are other concerns for them. The Bulls, this is not bad for guys like Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball. We've just heard news today that he has actually taken part, a full participant in a Bulls mini team camp. And he is actually now, from possibly being unable to walk a year ago, or jump as the, uh, what was it, Stephen A. Smith or someone was saying, he couldn't jump from yeah. his own chair. Uh, yeah. the, guy, the guy is looking NBA ready, which is incredible news. And he starts to move up the boards. And he already has, in recent ADP data, I pulled it the other day, he has actually started to go up in the most recent draft boards. This guy now is starting to move up every single like board. The second that you hear that Lonzo Ball is playing basketball again, People start to get a bit like, oh, is he? And yeah. where was it? He is shot up. It'll be it's uh, a flyer territory, that's for certain. It's a last oh, round to have a crack at, if anything. It is a it is a last round flyer, but he's he's the problem is this. He's he's gone up. He wasn't yep. even on boards. People weren't even thinking about him. They're thinking about him with the booze bus mm-hmm. in Chicago, Bazellus, and just leaving these guys happy on the waiver wire. Guys like Eve Missy, these big breakout guys. But now Lonzo Ball has been drafted in at 132. Mm-hmm. So he has now moved into ADP boards on Yahoo at 132.8 this week. He wasn't even drafted in their first three times of dropping this. The first two months, no one was even touching the bloke. So that is good news for him. But Skitty, yep. I just mentioned a little bit off air to you. Slow starts. How do you like to start your leagues off? How do you like to start your season? Yeah, as I said earlier, Jay Wiz, I do like to look at how the schedule um, shapes up for the first week, especially because then I can look at it and go, okay, well, if I'm going to take a flyer as my last round pick or my second last round pick, that's how I can divvy up of what kind of value I want to get from it. There's no point in me looking at, um, you know, a guy that's playing two games in the first week when I can be getting a guy that had three and it's a wave of wire guy anyway. So I'm just going to be shipping them off. I'm more or less looking at who is playing in the first game on the first day that differentiated. The next one, then I'll take the next day after that. Have they got a back-to-back? We look at those. But first and foremost, we look at which player is going to be playing on that first game uh, in the first day. I think there's, what, six games? Uh, three games, six teams? I believe and, so in the first team. Yep. Yep. And we um, – or maybe it's just four. Let me just double-check that. But I will be I'm looking going to at players grid. in that, in that – um, in that way before I'd look at anything else before, like as we look at the slow starts. But you do have another way that you like to look at it as well. Yeah, sorry, Jay. There's three games. No, there's yep. not. That is... Um, I'm looking at Tuesday. We've got New York and the Celtics, the Knicks and the Celtics. We've got Minnesota and the Lakers. Uh, and we have the 
Celtics versus Knicks. There's only two games. Three. There's three games. The Celtics and the Knicks. The right, Lakers and Minnesota. And uh, and the Lakers and Minnesota. There you go. Two games to start it off. Yeah, right. On well, Tuesday. There you go. That's on the Tuesday. Oh, the- I'm an idiot. There you go. And then on the Wednesday, we go from 10. So we go from a 2 to a 10 to a 4 to a 10, a 10, and a 5 to start off the first week. So there's only a couple of games there, as you said. It, it doesn't start on a Monday. There's like Monday is the rest I, day. My absolute apologies there, Jay. I was looking at the um, at the preseason tournament ah. schedule, and I was like, oh, there's – and then I realized that one of the team's name was the New Zealand Breakers, and I went, hang on a minute, that's wrong. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So Nick Celtics, Wolves, Lakers. Um, there is guys that you can stream there before anything else. Um, yeah, you know, Al Horford's obviously a good one there. If people are overlooking Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart, then you can definitely have a crack at them there for the game against the Celtics. But I'd be more looking at the Wolves. I reckon the Wolves is the one there. Jade McDaniels isn't getting drafted. I would definitely be having a swing at McDaniels mm. as as that shot there because he will, he will start off well. I would, I'm really curious to see where Rob Dillingham does in the uh, in the in the preseason. We'll see how many yeah, minutes he gets. Yeah. Now I know it's preseason, but I want to see how it shakes out. But this is again, we can start to look because a team like the Timberwolves, they're up against the Lakers. We can get some like we can be like, okay, how 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 are they going for it? Because the Lakers obviously don't want to put on a big crap. Minnesota just wants to make a statement out the gates, and Edwards has pretty much said just that. But it's interesting because there are a few teams that in the week one. Are going to take some L's potentially if you draft them, especially if you go heavy on guys like the Mavericks, the Nuggets, the Heat, the Knicks, the Kings, the Spurs, the Jazz, and the Wizards. All these yep. teams only play two games in the first week. What is interesting to note there is top picks like Luca, mm-hmm. like Jokic, and Wemby only play two games in the first week. Now, this is interesting to me, Skitty, because when they play only two games in one week, the guys who got the best picks – the confidence of a guy who may be drafted late up against them might be a little bit buoyed. They might be a little bit high on it. They might be like, oh, sick, I beat the guy with Wemby or Jokic. Cool. And that manager might freak out. They've taken a bit of an L. Cool. But it actually happens again. And this is what's really interesting, a bit of a psychological play or a little bit of a tactic you can use because the Nuggets, the Heat, and the 76ers, these teams also then only have two games twice in the first six weeks. And in fact, Skitty, we did a bit of a dive before on the schedule as well, and we had a look through it. And when we have a look, those are two possible lost weeks of six. But the record for these guys as well isn't that great. So when we had a look at it, we broke it down. These teams are playing those, but they don't have a lot of other games. The Nuggets, they're pretty reasonable. They're the best schedule. They're 2-4-4, two, 2-3-3. Four, four, two, three, and three. So you're getting a potential couple of L weeks there, and a couple of you've got to be competitive or cut it fine. Two four-game weeks in the first six for the Heat as well. But the worst one of that is actually the Washington Wizards, funnily enough. You might be able to get some value if their team's losing and their guys aren't performing. They actually start off with two games, like we said. Then they go three, three, four, three, and three. They only play four games once. The only team, Skitty, in the NBA to only play four games in the first six weeks. If you can swoop in there and get some draft value, you are looking at something really good because they have that five-game week right around your playoff time in week 19, Skitty. So you, you could get a yep. little bit tactical with that. Yep, absolutely. You can. It's a, it's a good way to look at it. The, the other guys, you know, um, it, it just depends if they are going to perform. That's the uh, question with the Wizards now, isn't it, Jake? Because uh, they yep. could be short. They could be very short. But again, we love uh, what Valentinus can do. And we love that he just absolutely eats boards alive. Like we drink drinks. And that's why he has flown up on our big draft board. You want to make sure you get into the yeah. Patreon. Check this bad boy out. Want to take your fantasy sports game to the next level? Insight Fantasy Sports are bringing you exclusive content all year round, such as preseason draft guides, player rankings, waiver wire advice, statistical deep dives, priority podcast questions, and tons more. So what are you waiting for? Get full access to the experts. Go to patreon.com slash insight fantasy sports and subscribe to Insight Unlimited today Buddy absolutely Peter. do that and that's where our big draft board is as well the latest edit is up on there it is the absolute chef kiss get on and get into that one um 
Skinny, playoff-wise, I think I guess when you said earlier, why is the playoffs and fantasy schedule so very important to you? Yeah, I mean, it's as I said, don't like to deal with the bullshit right at the end in uh, the Week 23, Week 22 uh, dealio that we have to deal with there. So if we finish there on uh, Week 21, uh, 19 to 21 or 18 to 20, both good options, but we have to look at the guys that – do play those two game weeks in that time. And uh, that is the Bulls, the Mavericks, and the Pelicans. They all have a two game week in that week. And that makes it bloody hard to be able to uh to be able to counteract that, Jay Wizzle. Um it's yeah, sorry, especially if you the got a couple as well. Of- sorry. I do apologize. Well, they're on the next well. week. So that's the big thing. Like you said earlier, that you you top the podcast, you you swallowed the lead, and I love it. You- do that, you, you, you're spot on because the Mavericks no. have copped a two game week in the playoffs for fantasy basketball again. yet again. So, again, two team, two years in a row for two games, but yeah, it starts in week 18. So, if you think about it again, right here, if you do move those down to week 18, 19, and 20 to finish your season earlier. Now, if it's a 21, 22, 23 week, this doesn't impact as much. But if you're starting your team and you're in the 18, 19, and 20 week, and you've got well, Zach Levine, Paolo Bancaro on your team, Zion Williamson, and Luca, well, you, you, you're pretty much facing a little bit of a shit show because you go from week 18 with the, yeah, the Bulls, the Magic, and then the Pelicans, and then to finish it off in week 20, it's the Mavericks. So that's why, Skitty, it's important. You need to look at it as the broad picture of like, okay, how much shit fight do I have to have with this? Because you could take maybe one of those guys in, but you would be absolutely bonkers crazy to probably to to, to run the gamut of going Levine, Paolo Bancaro, uh, mm. Trey Murphy, Zion Williamson, and Luca. You could probably actually have picked Kyrie up in your second round, maybe. Yeah, so then- and the other thing you got to remember is too is when like you know you see these guys that are coming up the draft board higher now, like you know Paolo is shooting up draft boards. And they do have to deal with that two game week in the in the playoffs. So it is definitely one to be watching out. Levine can be dodged if you do go 19, 20, 21. That is the same um, as Paolo Bancaro, but it's just gonna have to be watching what your what your settings are gonna be. But the Mavs and the uh the Pals they are the real, real, uh real dastardly ones there. And this is where when you do move it back, if you go 21, 22, 23, you do miss all of this, but then what you essentially get is you get the crapshoot of Darius Days being the NBA MVP for at least Skylar Mays, baby. Skylar Skylar Mays season. Skylar Mays season. You're going to get people you've never even heard of or names you won't even be able to pronounce, like Brooke Lopez. Uh, You'll be able to... (laughs) You'll be able to... uh, You'll be able to get um, these... What was his name, G? Um, He was the bloke from the... Um, from the Thunder, yes. the Thunder, and he was averaging 20 rebounds for the week. I'm pretty sure his name was like Jalen Horde or something like that. It was like two years ago, and he was averaging I 20 can't. boards per game. It was unbelievable. All I know is that it absolutely shat on my uh, J- uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl pickup, thinking yeah. like he'll get some minutes, and then that like blokes jumped in and ended up getting like, like- Jalen or Jaden Horde, something like that, and he just absolutely destroyed it for a week. The horde of the boards. He was absolutely big. Uh, and this is the thing we have to, if we've got it, like when we're drafting, this is the thing. We've got to be conscious of this because you need to know your settings, I think is the number one big takeaway yeah. from this podcast. Because if you know your settings when you're looking to draft, this is where schedule does matter. Don't fall for the bullshit that it doesn't. It does. Because there are things you can do or ways you can make the schedule work for you. Because again, it's fantasy basketball. It's not real life. We're not playing for houses. We're playing for cash comps with our mates. But there is, there are things that we can do to manipulate the system in our way to draft with some strategy. That's yeah. what the manipul- That's what the thing is, man. It's strategy, right? Strategy, hundred percent. You're speaking. You're speaking truth, CJ. And and that's all it should be. So again, if you're not going to pay attention to the schedule, be like, no, it's fine. They all play eighty-two games. Great. But maybe somebody is, and maybe it's slapped them in the uh, slapped them in the face, and they're the owner of Jokic, and they've lost three games out of six. Because this is the other thing: if you are in this eighteen week playoff after week six, Kitty, why use that as a good rule, dude? It's a third of the way through the season, yeah. And if that person's floundering on a sub five hundred record with their number one pick, you might be able to throw in a second or a third round pick and something nice in there. And get a good deal for Jokic, even though he might be performing, not maybe not even Jokic, but just someone else in that first round, in that like 
ether of players. So just pay attention to those people who are starting slow in your leagues mm-hmm. and look at the top talents on those teams and make a move there. And that's all you for know me. What I- Fair enough, TJ. And I got one last thing. You know, the the one thing I really like as well about the schedule, what they've done, I think really, really nice, is for the teams that are playing in the playoff picture, yeah, we have those teams that are down and have two-game weeks. But the only two teams that have a five-game week in the playoff um, portion of the schedule is the two bottom dwellers in the Wizards and the Nets, which are probably going to be already resting players by then anyway. So it's like, well, it's actually not that much of a hit. And everything else is kind of level playing field for the finals where where this is going to happen unless you do have Luca, um, and yeah, that, then that could be the uh, that could be the detriment to your team really because I think that's how you get Shea over Luca in the end of these days, are you? And maybe that's exactly right where you say like guys like Cam Thomas. I mean, we know he's going to go out there and play for whatever and put yeah. up fifty points a game. So five games for him in Week Nineteen, mm. great. Uh, Jordan Huge. Poole, same, it's same, same, but different. Same, same, same Kuz. name. Who this? Kuz. There you go. Is, is Kuz even on the team? Is he being traded off? What are they doing there? Like, and this is the thing as well. There's no other five game like explosions of teams apart from those negatively impacting two games after week 16. And I guess that's the only other note I could probably add, though. If you are making the push for the playoffs, there is no close knit five teamers. Um, there's a lot of four teamers, like the Utah Jazz. They play consistent four gamers from week 13. They play four games a week all the way down to week 20, which means you are a potentially a very quicker game away from Lowry Marketed just being pulled and injured the entire time. But they're the ones with the most consistent schedule as well. So yeah. they've got four, 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 four all the way down. Uh, the Trailblazers, they're very similar. They've only got two, three game weeks in the same span. Otherwise, it's all fours. Low yeah. volume games in that one would be the New York Knicks. They play a lot of threes Please. with a five, three, three, three. So that's where Jalen Brunson for me, if I'm struggling, comes down that line a little bit more. Uh, other teams I like, Timberwolves, like you said earlier, you like their schedule from week 16 as you start to push it. Uh, week 14, four, four, five, four, four. And then it peters out to three, 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 three. And you know, then after that, you know oh, who I on. love, G, for, for the coming home schedule? Oh, the Hornets. Nah, it's the Indiana Pacers after Ooh, week 14. So it, they've got two games in week 13, two games in week 14. Now that sucks, mm. but then they go 4-4-4-3, four, 4-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. <laughs> I love that. That's a really solid skill. And, and similar, the, the Hornets, they have a dud two-gamer yeah, in 12, better, and they go 4-4-4-4-4-4-3. Yeah. Four, 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 but I like yeah, the Pacers as well. I, and, I, and I hate to say this in the same breath, but I like the Detroit Pistons. And I feel dirty and I need a shower for thinking it. But from week 13, they go four, 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 three, four. And then that's good for guys like Cade Cunningham, Jalen Durham, Tobias Harris, and that crew. That gets a bit of a bump from them as well. Gee, I found my new favorite, actually. It's actually the Miami Heat is my favorite. They go uh, five in week 16 and then four, 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 straight through playoffs, just all fours. And does that hurt Jimmy Butler? Yes. Does that not hurt? Bam Adebo, um, Terry Rogier, Tyler Hero. Oh, no, that, that's nice right there. But this is where we also said these are guys you want to attack because the Miami Heat, they actually have three two-game schedules. They're one of only a few teams to get the three this year. So two, yeah. there's only a handful of teams that only get uh, only play two games three times, and the Miami Heat's one of them. And all of those weeks happen before week eight. Bang! It's it's like Adam Silver just just decided to be like, you know what? I don't like the weather anywhere else. You know what? You guys have great weather in Miami. Just go to the beach because it's yeah. in week two, week five. Wait, is it week five? Yeah, yeah, week two, a week one. Sorry, week five, and then again in week number eight, and they play two games. So, like yeah. you said, yeah. Bam Adebayo, uh, yeah. Jim, Tyler Hero, Jimmy yeah. Butler. These players, Jimmy, Jimmy's iffy because it can be. There's a lot of um, time off that he could get from there from mani- uh, injury management, load management. So him not so much, but Tyler Hero definitely. Bam. That. Ter- you like, hey, Terry you like Terry Rozier. You like Terry Rozier? There you go. There, you, Terry Rozier. Hey, look, maybe Kelly Ware starting to get some minutes. Jovic yeah, might that. be playing okay, and Jovic yeah. is like a, a, a bit of a peripheral player. And maybe you could just trade a guy who's doing okay, but you like it a bit more for your schedule and he's going to be seeing a lot of minutes. 
Maybe Homie Harkes has been on your wire. Homie Harkes is a stream target in that time when Jimmy Butler's out. He's going to be filthy. And their schedule gets a heck of a lot better because they're not going to be putting up as many games, but it starts to pick up from four games. They do play out that swing week in week uh, number nine. They pick up back to four games. Then it's three, four, four, three, 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 five. And then, like you said, five, four, 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 all the way through the playoffs. And that's what you want to bring your team success. You want yeah, games because right. the most games you can get up there, the most stats you can get, and the most wins you can get. And that's how you win your league, Skitty. Damn straight, Jay Wiz. Couldn't say it any better ourselves. Thank you very much. Mate, you take care. Be well. Make sure you like and subscribe, like we said, to all of the links down below for all of your inside gear. Big drop By board. How much? Big drop Damn. board. Big drop board. Oh, even there's a Wait. thing we could play. We did the video, but look, here's this one. Damn straight. That's going to get you the dub in your uh, in your fantasy league, starting off strong like that. Absolutely. It's got heaps of advice in there. Get onto it. Get into it now. It is on our Patreon. It's cheap as chips. In fact, it's probably actually cheaper than chips uh, mm. because of the big large at the fish and chip shop is about six bucks now and it's five bucks Australian a month. So I think it's better value to get onto us. Get onto Insight. We'll catch you soon. Like and subscribe to all the things and we'll catch you soon, everyone. Take care.